John, anything you want to talk about? Or? Yeah. DJ? I got things that might come up if I can remember. Well, if you get some dead spots, you know, yeah. bring it up. Yeah. Uh, you got anything you want? To talk about? From Erie Zone Government Access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host. We got a press conference. You are looking good today, Cass. <laughs> well, here we are. Boy, boy, and we are live, by the way. Didn't seem it. We've been gone for one, two, about three weeks, right? Yes. yes. You, you guys were gone for three weeks? Yeah. He was gone. Wow. Hey, I was on the road visiting my kids. and <laughs> uh, They live in where, Minnesota or something like uh, that? Minnesota, Mississippi, and uh, Eastern PA. Uh, you had two M's and a... Yeah. And then I had to pick up my mother at the airport. She was uh, in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I've been like traveling wow. man. I see, and uh, I saw you on Facebook. I was just telling you pictures of you at the amusement park and <laughs> doing getting, getting squirt, squirted and everything else. Yeah, I, I said Kaz is on the social network this week. It's not me. I'm not. <laughs> doing it for. You have a Facebook page with like no picture on it. You know, it's I, there's Kaz, and I, I, you see his name, and it's on. You got you and DJ <laughs> have to help me because we do. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm like a, when when I get to that stuff, it's like yeah. it's another alien world. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's like, who is Casimir Kwiatkowski? You know, I just know Kaz. <laughs> and I don't even know who Casimir Kwiatkowski is. I know, we you, we we know Kaz, by, that's it. Yeah, exactly. You can tell everybody who you are. You're, well, I'm John Steiner. And, and, and I'm DJ Barker. And Kaz is all dressed up today, I thought. Well, we had a press conference with uh, Senator Casey, but... Hmm. Anything good? Well, you know, we'll see what happens, you know. Here we go. Ooh, I... You, first caller. First caller, and then what happened? Uh -huh. You hung up on him. No, I hit the, uh, hit the, if you want to call back, something happened here, but. You've been out of practice. No, no, that's the no. button you push. <laughs> this one right here, right? Yeah. Okay. We'll call so, back. Yeah, you can call us right back. I don't know what happened. There you go. You try it this time, John. Go ahead, you're on the air. Go ahead, caller. Oh, hello. I'm glad to see you're back. Yeah, I feel good. I, I, I mean, it's been a, uh, when you go on vacation, you feel like uh, it takes a while to get back in a, in a groove again. Right. <laughs> I have a question. What can you do when a post office loses a registered letter? Wow, I never heard that, but. Yeah, my son had a letter come to the Legion post office, I think it is, on Legion Road or something like that. Right. And he went to pick it up. And nobody could find it, and this was over a week ago, and I don't know, you know, who to get in contact with because if, you know, if you get in trouble because you didn't get your letter. Right. I think, well, I'm not sure about the Legion Road office, but at the one on uh, East 38th Street, I think that's where the postmaster is. Well, see, I tried to find that in the phone book, and I couldn't find the you're, postmaster you're, general. Or I, I found your best bet is to actually ride to one of the post office places. Uh, do you live on the uh, by the one on East 38th? No, I live on East 9th, but my son went to the Legion Post Office, yeah. and they they were very nasty, and you know said, "Well, we we told you we can't find it." Yeah, well, I mean, I think you can file a. There's there's probably an office out, and I'm I'm thinking it's on East 38th. Okay, I uh, have that number. So and uh, there's I know in the past when I had issues with. Uh, like we have mailboxes out in the streets on parts of the east side and people block mailboxes and all that. They do have departments like complaint departments. So I think you would have to register probably either a complaint or a request to find out what happened to the reg registered letter. I don't know how the post office loses a registered letter. I don't know if anyone's accountable in the city anymore. Well, I mean, when you register it. The IRS. I mean, do you know where the letter was from even? IRS. Oh, oh. Better, oh yeah. better get that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I would contact the IRS too and tell them that you did not receive a registered letter. Yeah, I think he did do that. But yeah, because don't 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 let them come after you on the other end now. I just wondered about the mm -hmm. post office. You well, know, never... How long did he wait before he went out to the Legion Road to check on it? Oh, okay, yeah. And another thing I wanted to ask: mm -hmm. when when uh, that city uh, citizens to be heard, I think it is, is yeah. on city council. Right. How in the world can you guys listen to that Barnes every time he comes up there and put you all down and about that money? 
Mm-hmm. You know, I, I listen to that quite often, and it's exactly the same thing all the time. And I just wonder how city council feels about what he says, because he does make a lot of good points. Yeah, well, you know what? The, the thing is about citizens to be heard, that's exactly what it is. And in a democracy, uh, as long as they keep it, uh, you know, and that's up to the president and the and the. The, the, the council, but even when I was on the school board, we had people that would, you know, week after week come up there. But you know what? That's their privilege because you're, you're giving them that time. And as long as they, they act in a decent manner, you know, mm-hmm. and even though you have to listen to it over and over again, I mean, that's their, that's really their privilege. And, and I've said to a lot of my constituents, you know, it may be unpleasant, but, you know, when we're elected, we, we have to put up, if we like to hear ourselves get praised, sometimes we have to, you know, listen to the other end, too. I, I know, you know, it probably doesn't seem right, but, uh, you know, everybody should have the right to address us. You know, what happens at, at Milton? I knew, I knew that, but I just wondered how it made you guys feel. Well, I think it makes some people probably uncomfortable, and it probably makes, uh, you know, a lot of them probably don't want to hear it over and over again. But, well, you what, know. I'll tell you, when, when I've been to Mill Creek Township meetings, if, if you've ever been to one of those, the uh, supervisors out there tell you they don't want to hear it. They don't want to. They've already heard one person speak about it, and if you're here to talk about the same thing, and they'll banter back and forth with you, and basically tell you that they don't want to hear you. They don't want to hear what you have to say, even though you've taken the time to come to their meetings. Right. I've noticed very poor uh, behavior f- between the supervisors in Mill Creek and their citizens. At least people come here; they're heard. Uh, they're not wasting their time, and like Cass says it's a democracy so i think that uh, it's a good thing okay well thank you very much hey, and, and i'm glad you're back and ma'am if you want uh if if you try calling these 38 if, if you have any trouble give me a call at home okay i'm in the book okay all and right thank you very cause, much because i do think they have someone you can talk to there either an inspector or somebody and you can probably file some paperwork to see what happened to it. Right. But make sure you do contact the IRS also. Oh, yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Yeah, all our mail goes through Pittsburgh now, so even yeah. if it was a local letter, it goes out. It would out. seem like if, if, if her son got a notification, yeah. it made it to Erie. It would, oh, it yeah. would still be at the post office for a certain amount of time. And they should be able to track it anyway. Correct. Right. Go ahead, caller. I enjoy listening to Randy Barnes. Well, I mean, the woman asked a nice question, and I said, you know, I, I, like John distressed me when I heard what, you know, what they do in Milk Creek. I, you know, when you have a public hearing or any kind of hearing, you, you know, maybe you're going to hear the same thing over and over, but that's that's a game, right, John? That's true. That's, uh, you know, that's how it's going. By the way, John, happy birthday. Thank you. Wait a oh, minute. Wait a minute. Birthday. That was just, wow. yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> what, 29 years old? Yeah, nice. again. Nice. Okay, maybe a little older. 29, but. or do we uh, <laughs> flip it around? 47. Yeah, that's what happens when social media gets at you. That's right. That's right, John. Everybody knows now. John needs a website. You guys better work when I with him. <laughs> I've got a few questions for you, Kaz. Okay, go ahead. I quite a few. Well, you've been we've been gone a while, so John, I figured you'd be loaded. I, I you know, I'm all over like a horse, but uh, <laughs> or, or, or or is it the material he deposited? That's I was going to say the the port side. <laughs> But I see that they've uh, paved uh, State Street again down by the down by the television station above 38th Street, both sides. I see they did Elliot where a certain person lived or used to live, and the streets all over. A lot could have used more mm-hmm. than that area. They could have patched the holes like we're getting up here in the Upper East Side, and the, the job that I've seen. What happens when the water gets down between the seams and it freezes and pushes all that up? Don't they have anybody doing that road work that has enough sense to tar those seams so the water doesn't get into them? Don't they tar them when they're done, John? I thought they did. They don't run any tar along the seams. You talking about the first coat or the second coat? The final coat. They don't, which would be the second coat. Well, you know what? Those are good questions, and uh, I'm going to... I just saw the engineer about, about five minutes ago, but I'll ask him about uh, 38th Street near I- ICU, right? 
Yeah, State Street. And Elliot, uh, what a where, road. It's over there in this. Uh, yeah, whereabouts on Elliot, though? Look. Up, up on where a gal used to uh, live that her dad was a councilman. Hmm. Oh, well, I, I don't know if that's still the case. No, I know it's up for sale. Yeah. But and, uh, then State Street, all the way up to about uh, from 38th to 40th on both sides. And then you want me to ask about seeming? Putting tar into the seams. Seeming the final You can't coat. pour a whole thing because I don't think you have a roller and a spreader big enough for it. They do two sections to cover the road. Yeah. And then they don't put any tar along the seams. And I don't I don't even think I've seen any along the curb line. Well, you know, every time you see the road break, you can tell where, you know, like three years later, you can tell where the machine stopped. That's the reason. Now, I have another question on this, uh, oh, uh, this curfew. Okay. You know, I noticed Mel Witherspoon played the, the, pol <coughs> the political gem again uh, before the, the news had it that Curtis Jones was going to be a no vote. Right. And then when the vote came up, he voted for the extension of it all year round. Well, There's well, old Melvin playing the, the middle of the fence, and he voted no. Well, he, he voted no this time, he said, to study it. Well... But he, he's, but he made a caveat, and I'll, I'll kind of hold him to his word. Well, that's what Curtis said, too, with the, to the news, and he changed his position. And that's what, well, like I said, Mel's always been on the fence. And this mm -hmm. is why city councils should stagger their votes. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, I, I went around, John, on... Uh, I know, you don't have the backing. Oh, no, I went around on Night of Erie. And I was surprised the number of people that and I, I talked to that are that are okay with this, you know, curfew. Yeah, but here's the whole thing. I I think if the situation was mm -hmm. arrived at the home, you would need a curfew. But what are you going to do with them when they're on violating the curfew? How are you going to handle it? If there's nobody home, mm -hmm. where are you going to take these kids? You're going to take them down to the convention center and, and say, well, you stay here. I don't, first of all, I don't think there's that many, okay, and not that many, but they seem to be handling it now. In fact, when I meet with the chief, and we will be meeting with him shortly, I'll ask him, because that will come up during our meeting, uh, ask the chief, what do we do now with the kids, okay? What do you do with the ones that are in violation? Well, they take. I know they take them home, but if there's no, uh, obviously nobody there. Where they're at. I'm going to ask them what we do with them. But look, John, I don't think, I don't think the curfew is the exact answer, but it's, uh, it's just another tool in their toolbox. Well, I remember when, when my kids were small, I told them, when it, you better be home before the street lights are out. You're right, John. We had our own curfew. That was our curfew. But you know what? I mean, like I told people, this is not going to solve the problem. Oh. But it's it, but to the police now, now at least in summertime, for a two-hour window, they have a reason under ordinance to stop someone. They they can't be challenged now. They you know if they think that, that somebody's out there you know what what, and and there are provisions in the ordinance, as was pointed out. If you read the the, the whole ordinance, there are exceptions made for uh, kids who are working being with their parents, uh, being in close proximity to their house. There's an ordinance that covers uh, sponsored events, like would, which would be a school or uh, what you call, uh, you know, like the Philharmonic or the anything downtown that's, you know, a recognized activity. Yeah, block party nights. Yeah, but well, I'm not sure. But the kids ain't supposed to be there, but. Oh, I see. But, I mean, it doesn't cover, like, if you have a private party, like a bunch of kids, that doesn't cover that. But if you're down at the Seawolves game and you're coming home, it's covered well, in the ordinance. Did you guys change the city council vote to change the, to 10 o'clock? Is the curfew 10 o'clock now? Or is First it? reading went by. Well, in, in summer it was 12 o'clock. Right. In school it was 10. So in a couple of weeks it's going back to 10 anyway. Right. So the new rule will say that year-round now. I remember when... Uh, it'll be 10 o'clock year-round. When Jimmy I talks. I remember a, a, a speaker all the time down there, and he's been decrying for the last five years this was going to happen. I remember when Jim Thompson was no. alive. 
He uh, asked, and now it's coming to hit you right smack in the teeth, and they think getting all these jobs and all that and a gun buyback and everything mm-hmm. is going to stop this. You know, we had the old Eagle thing way back when, yeah, and they were in the areas, and there wasn't this. But then again, we don't have what we have now. We have too many people getting social benefits from the federal government. They don't want to go to work. They're, they're taking all these benefits, and they're out there making crimes. Well, the, pro- the problem is, uh, you know what, as I told someone, I told the, the, uh, when I was interviewed by the, the media, and I said, there is no easy solution. If there was, you know, we would have had this solved already, but... You know, nobody can wave the wand and say that. You know, a lot of people are blaming the mayor. You know, where's the mayor? Da, 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 da. It's not his fault. What, nobody, it, it, no. no, it's. I mean, it's what's going on in the households. I mean, it's, it, once again, it's it's the actions of a few that portray uh, a whole demographic of people. And it's what's going on in the home is what the problem is. Well, yeah, I mean, John, you, you know, I, I was, somebody told me, uh, you're still there, right, John? Yeah, somebody made a comment that uh, when I made a comment about parents being accountable, I said, look, it has to start somewhere. Yeah, but a lot of these kids don't have both parents. Well, no, but I mean, that's where if they do, you you can't have your kid, you know, coming in at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock and going, where were you? None of your business. I remember when when Jim Thompson was alive, he asked me to serve on the curfew committee. So I was on that initial committee. And, uh, you know, I wanted, I suggested 10 o'clock. You're around? Yeah. And uh, when they were talking 12 o'clock, I mean, I'm like, there's nothing positive going on past 10 o'clock at night. Not even in summer. No. Nothing positive past 10 o'clock. We were burned out. Let me tell you, John, I don't know about you, but I was burned out by 11 o'clock. Yeah, yeah, I was too. I mean, I was ready to, you know, catch a few Z's for the next day, you know. Listen, I was was sticking pins. I was working in sandwich shops and everything else. and. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, playing sports and all that, I was done. Even well, when we were kids and we played baseball, day, I mean, by you know, by the time the streetlights came on, we we were starting to get, uh, you know, we were, we were heading down the the, the road to the. We had enough things well, to do out there. You didn't want to get in trouble. Well, you know, John, you've hit on an important part about what the problem is: is that the you know the way that things are now the more children you have the more federal assistance you get from the government and most of these folks are just having children just in order to increase their benefit package and, and, and the federal government won't let them get off it right and then uh, you know most of them are single parent homes and if you have five or six kids I mean I have two kids ten years in age apart and I can't barely keep track of them let alone five or six kids age, you know, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, I mean, as a single parent. And, you know, a lot of them start, you know, with the teen pregnancy and different things like that. They start young, <clears throat> then they start getting into this rut. It was just like that deal the other night, that 17 year old. He got out in the accident with the two police cars. Yeah, yeah, right. In I'm- jail, I guess, for DUI. And we got two smashed up police cars, and they're, they're saying one is a total. How, do, how and who determines what is a total? Are they hoping the insurance company will buy new police cars? Well, look, looking at those cars, John, and judging from what happened to mine in the past, okay, they're probably pretty close. Well, I don't know. But, I mean, you start talking about, it looked like he took out the wheel, uh, you know. The, the one looked bad. Not a total wreck. The no. one looked bad. Well, you don't have to be. Today, John, I mean, I was surprised. What they call a total is amazing. I mean, you, I looked at what, one time they told one of my cars, and I go, you got to be kidding. And he goes, well, yeah. The I, whole thing there is the insurance companies don't want to put the money into it so they can total it, and they can give you whatever the book price is. Yep, there you go. And that's Which is a, always lower than. And that seems to, to be the the. The way it is going these days. But I agree, you know, John. I had three kids, and let me tell you something. You you can't tell if your kid's coming home and he's uh, intoxicated or under some kind of other, other drug. You know, you're around them all the time. We know there's a problem. Oh, you don't know what they're getting on. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you 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 can tell. You know, if you look at some, you can tell if they're here or not. You know. Well, yeah, all you guys just look in their eyes, and their, their their manner of speech, and whatever. Jeez, I, even today. I I come home and my wife doesn't know how I am. <laughs> That's because you're drinking vodka. It doesn't leave, you know, well, smell. He's, he's on that wine. Old. Oh, he's on the wine? Okay. Old DR, they call it. Oh, okay. 
So if we know there's a problem with society and things are kind of crumbling a little bit with yeah. parents and parental units, and how do we fix it? I mean, how do we make people want to be better? That's a mean dollar question. If we knew the answer to that question, we because we're spending more money f trying to fix the problems that have been created. But we how actually, do you stop the problems from happening? We actually had a meeting here at council, and they showed us all the things that exist now. You know, all the programs. Yeah. But people aren't taking advantage of them. Right. Nobody wants to leave their computers. No. Everybody wants to play video games yeah. and yeah. and the internet. And you know, I was uh, you know I was I grew up on the Lower East Side and. You know, that neighborhood, I've been doing some work down there, and wow, that neighborhood, the whole area is just totally different. I, You know, something that bothered me that I wanted to talk about is I, you drive up between 6th and 7th and Wallace, and apparently a gentleman was shot right there between, and they have this makeshift uh, memorial. And uh, all you see there, I, there was a, they had a Winnie the Pooh thing, and a bunch of like 50 empty bottles of liquor laying on right there as a shrine is that a tribute or what it's supposed to be i mean a tribute at least leave them leave the guy a full bottle they probably you know <laughs> but i mean to drive through a neighborhood and the kids in that neighborhood and the people in that neighborhood yeah drive through there and there's you know and they're memorializing this person by 50 empty bottles of booze i mean it's it's just not right i mean i understand the whole you know you want to tribute to somebody yeah. you have the cross there i mean you see him around town where a lot of people have had accidents that's good but you're just for the young people you're just uh showing them that you know liquor and alcohol it's, it's okay it's all good yeah. you know we we uh um, we want to memorialize this guy and remember this guy. I mean, it makes him look like kind of like a drunk. John, you still there? John? Oh, he must have. Yeah, he got tired of talking. Yeah, but uh, John, you can call back if you got any more. Uh... His five minutes were up. <laughs> <laughs> he times himself. He's probably got about 15 minutes. Yeah. John should probably come on the show. I mean, you've been trying to get him I've on I've been trying show. to get him on there. He's like a voice. He's like Charlie's angel. I don't think he wants anybody to know what he looks like because he, yeah. he's like a... He's afraid he people. He gets around the community, and, and that's yep. where he gets his tips. I haven't met John yet, but I ran into a couple of your other viewers over the years. They just randomly pull me out of crowds and say, hey, I saw you on TV, and I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about some other things, Kaz. Uh, last time I was on the show, I remember talking about there was no more quiz. I yeah. don't know if you remember you told, I've told you about that. Have you heard anything about any quizzes? Nope. Another thing, a bridge to the peninsula. I'm sorry, a tunnel. Yeah. That's been coming up a lot. I think that, if that happens, uh, that would revitalize the east side of you the really city. You really think we'll get one, old John? Yes, I do. Why? A tunnel to the, a tunnel to the peninsula. I, I, why do you think we'll get one? Because the right people are pushing for it to happen. I think the Presque Isle folks uh, aren't dead set against it. Mm -hmm. I think the basic infrastructure is there. Uh, you know, if you go through the channel area, I mean, they have the roads on that side of the peninsula. Well, they, 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 they talked about a tunnel hooking the convention center to the hotel. Right. A pedestrian tunnel. Mm -hmm. And they ruled that out. Well, that's a little bit different. Yeah. Um, you couldn't build a bridge. If you built a bridge across to the peninsula, you'd have to start the bridge like on 6th Street and work it across from there. Why is that? Uh, just, I mean, the, the angle of it and, diff and, and the, uh, I can't remember the exact reasons, but the tunnel would be the only econom feasibly, economically feasible way to do it. Um, you have to dig deep, too, though. Uh, it all depends. Well, I if mean, you're bringing in ocean ships. Yeah, right. But, I mean, as far as, but, but that would be the only way to do it. And if you look at Peninsula Drive on, on a Saturday, on a busy day... Why, well, I agree with you, John. The traffic is ridiculous. Something tells me, though, okay, here what I, here's what I see the roadblocks. Our neighbors to the west and south, Mill Creek, wouldn't be happy. Nope. Okay? Nope. Because that would give us a chance to economically develop the east side. Right. I'm not saying it would happen, but it would be more feasible right if that was an entry or exit point well see here let me explain something to you about how the state works okay i've been down there i've talked to some people most of them don't even know erie exists where in harrisburg yes well i know that they don't know we exist and the only person who, in our area that has any juice statewide is kurt sunny 
because Kurt Sonny is a Republican. Yeah. As as far you know, Ryan is is tight with uh, Ryan Bizarro is tight with the governor, which is a good thing. Um, you know, Pat and Flo and all those guys they've been around, but the Demo- they're in the minority. The Republicans are you know they run you know they run the House and the Senate and all that. So. The only person that could step up with any juice to make this happen would probably be Kurt Sonny and maybe Ryan. So if we can get those two involved, I mean, I don't know, you know, I don't think it would hurt Mill Creek that much. Because if the people from the West County, Mm -hmm. they're going to go that way. And a lot of people from the East County, I mean, you know, they don't go as much as the people over there. Well, I don't know if that's the case. I think right now, John, if if you're an East Sider... Okay, you're looking at, uh, you have to make the trek across town. Right. Okay, it's a lot easier when you live on uh, the west side of town to say, oh, we'll just take a ride to Sarah's, you know. Right. Like going to Sarah's is not, uh, I'm not saying it's hard, mm-hmm. but it's not a it's not a, a light jaunt for me even, you know, okay? Right. You know. I th- you know, I, I think it would, and you know, the Prescott people, they want more visitors to the park. Mm-hmm. But uh, but how about the environmentalists? Not gonna... You know that's where it gets a little sticky. I mean, you know, you're that's... talking about turning up to chat. Now you have to go deep too, John. Yeah. I mean, otherwise you're. I don't know how deep those ocean draft ships are. Right. But here, here's here's what scared me. If we couldn't keep the McBride Viaduct, mm-hmm. and the state talked us out of that easy. <laughs> okay. That was a dundas. That was a dun- You know what? Every time we do a study, yeah. Okay, a, a study. The only thing a study is is an excuse to to do what we want to do, what we plan on doing. From the well, that's yeah. another thing we talked yeah, about. Here's what I like about you. Okay, you, you you admitted that. You know, it's a political thing. Okay. Yeah. Because if you look at Pittsburgh, okay. Now I I told one of my cohorts here. I said I counted six or eight bridges on the north side alone. Okay. Right. And they're pretty close. Right. And then he goes, well, uh, that's Pittsburgh. I said, you're right. I'll, I'll agree with you. That's Pittsburgh. We're Erie. And I'm not going to demean any town, but we're, we're, we're not Albion. Right. Okay. Are they going to build an off-ramp? Well, that's the plan now. The plan is they're going to build... East Avenue. Uh, no, at uh, Buffalo Road. Well, Buffalo, yeah, Buffalo Road, and then it would go up East Avenue, Correct. I th- I'm not. Yeah. I'm not well, right in that area, I haven't seen a final design yet. Right. Well, that's the only thing that would make sense because if you're going, but, I mean, we live on the east side, guys. Right. We know if you're but trying no, to go to the center city, you're, you're, you're always to heading. Those people in, in a in a good world where you have political power, both things can stay. Right. Because you know, people don't understand this. There is a difference between McBride and, and the Bayfront Highway. You don't see it down on 12th Street because they're real tight. Then it looks like, well, that's a no-brainer, right? Yeah. But if you look at where the roads that go back, mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're starting points. Mm-hmm. As an east sider, there are times when, yeah, the Bayfront's a great way. But there's times when McBride was better to take down to Abs- East Avenue. There's absolutely no doubt. I mean, I've driven that road a million times. And you know what? Look absolutely at the, look right. Look at the mess at Broad Street. Yeah. In the afternoon, everybody's letting off of work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, we settled for, and I, I'll say this too, Mr. Pettit and anybody else, we settle for mediocrity in Erie. We got things like we're supposed to have two lanes to Glenwood. We wind up with one. Right. I'm we got a you. merge point that's. I'm surprised nobody's been killed yet. You're right. We got the same problem down to Bayfront when you come all the way down, and and you hit down there to you know where the connector meets the Bayfront Highway. The juniors down in that area. No, no, way, no, way down by the sewer plant. Okay. And you know you got to cut down to one lane there. All right. Hang tight, John. I like your comments. Go ahead, sir. You say there's going to be uh, an exit at Buffalo Road? That's what their plan Their plan is that right now you can, if I'm, let's see, you can, correct me if I'm wrong, you can enter or no, you can leave at Buffalo Road. Right, John? You can exit if you're coming north. Right. You can get off on Buffalo Road, but, you but can't if you're going south. It. Right. right. And, and you can't come on to it. Right. So that, what, what they're doing by eliminating McBride Viaduct, they realize there's a problem at Buffalo Road or 18th Street, whatever you want to call it. So they, they, that's the plan that there's going to be an intersection there. Plus they have to figure out how to get the pedestrians right. from the area near like where Burger King is and, you know, coming from uh, that area. How you get them across the road without having them 
the kids right now are just darting across the road, cutting holes in the fence. And yeah. So there's going to be a pedestrian walkway too somehow. That's the east side connector. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Well, what about how many lanes are they going to add to Buffalo Road? <laughs> Buffalo Road's going to be a that's a good, good question. Long jam if they don't widen Buffalo Road. It's like John. I was telling John here. I said, look what they did to Broad Street. When you come off the highway at Broad Street near uh, Brandel's painting there in the Perry Plaza, it's a nightmare. I mean, they should. When you come off that highway, each exit you should have. You know, you can go east or west, and they don't do that. It's always everything's half-assed whenever they do something. Wow, we were supposed to. When I was a kid, they were talking about a 38th Street interchange off 79, John. But he breaks. He brings hey, up a good point. You know where that went? How many lanes are they going to add? Yeah. I mean, that's a great question. Uh, they have a bridge. They can't. They'd uh, have to redo the bridge. What is it? The bridge is only one lane each I'll way. I'll tell you the truth, sir. I was not on council when they decide this, but when I see the final design, uh, they'll, I mean, we'll make a comment publicly. You can come down and look at it. But they have to knock out a whole row of buildings on either <laughs> one side or the south side. They'd have to, you're right. They'd have to knock out houses. Businesses, I mean, it's... I don't know. I haven't seen the final plan yet, yeah, to tell you the truth. I have not. Well, haven't you seen how many... Aren't they going to add any lanes to Buffalo Road going east of, going east of the bridge? I mean, other than putting in a, a whole new bridge, I don't know how they can do it. They have to widen the bridge as well. Yeah. Now, they're in the design phase now, and they have that committee. What was that committee called? The uh, They had the uh, Citizens Review Committee, or... Oh, Citizens Advisory Committee. I, there's so many committees. I yeah, they, they, uh, I, I'll, tell you, I'll try to get. You know, sir, I, I'm curious too. So I'll try to get a hold of someone to uh, yeah, I mean, see if they if I can get. I know the plans were very vague when they did them before. So I, I don't know if they've done anything you know about it lately. That decision was made long before they even did the study. I hate studies. We, you know, we pay. Uh, we have a lot of people in this building that know. What the, I mean, we can do the study. Well, you know, uh, we don't need to pay people to do a what, study. You know why they got committed? I, yeah, I, I know why they have them, but still. Political, political payoffs for people that are good. So you got to have got to have engineers study the problem three yeah. times. You, you know, know, engineers from out of town uh, that come in and tell us what we need to I do. Gonna, I was going to hire those guys in the Mid East after we bomb them. Yeah. They build their roads in what? Six months they're running again. Yeah, we need them to fix our bridges. All the bridges are falling apart. Do you have any more questions, sir? Well, probably not. I'd like to. I hope you can find an answer to Well, I'll, I'll try to get you. Well, I'll, I'll do better. If, when I see a drawing or something, I'll bring it to your attention. Uh, you can probably come. They'll have it on display at City Hall. I'll see if I can find an old one. Uh, like I say, I wasn't a. I wasn't privy to getting the copy back then. I wasn't on council, so I'll see if they got one in their file, okay? Oh, they made plans? Well, they had, they had what they call preliminary plans, but now they're studying. Now that they've made their decision pretty much, they know what they're, now they're going to go forward. I know they're talking about pedestrian walkways. They took some input from people about what people felt. They asked, I know some of the truck drivers were going nuts because they said they did a computer enhancement of the road. And they claimed that a truck could turn like, and the guy said, yeah, that's if everything's going right. <laughs> you ain't got a full load, and the driver, you know, the driver drives exactly like he's supposed to. Yeah. They, they were even debating them whether the road had enough, enough arc to it. Yeah, everybody gets, every truck in the city gets stuck under the bridges. It's <laughs> like Liberty and, uh, what is it, Ash. But, uh, yeah. Every week, there's, some, you know, there's a truck. Crawling. I'll try to keep you informed, okay, sir? That's the plan. Mm. Have you seen it really, John? I, I saw, I, it was a long time ago when I saw like drawings. They had them in the paper, I thought. And, uh, you know, I, I'm very interested in that because, I mean, it, that, we need that. You know, the, vi the viaduct, well, I mean, granted. Once the viaduct goes, it's going to be tough. I mean. Yeah. Well, it's gone now, basically, so. It's technically been gone, you know, blocked off this yeah. many years. And then they want to put, like, I saw, saw a green space on there. I mean, I, a park. I mean, what are you, you going to look at? The, the dump? I mean, and the buildings over there. When I drive down 12th, I, when I ride in the city, come down the highway, and you see those buildings right there on uh, the, the fat. Can somebody put a roof on that? Yeah. I'm sick. Just put something on there. Well, the when funny this, thing is, what's, when what's we're done, I'll building? bring you up to date. A roofing company. Pardon? Really? I don't know what's in there. Corners. 
I don't, I don't think company? it'll be that big. I, think so. I, I don't think I so, think sir. Part of that building is the roofing company. You got to be kidding me. I'm not. I, I saw a sign. I'm pretty oh, sure. I would have thought they needed ramps in all four corners. I don't know if they're going that far with it. I haven't, you know. And they're not. Aren't they going to have an entrance from Buffalo Road going east onto the east side connector going south? You lost us on that one. <laughs> I, do I see the plans? I don't. I, yeah. I agree. Yeah. Uh, well, the intersection there seems too tight with not really enough room. Well, I know some of the truck drivers were complaining about when they saw the preliminary plan. So that's why they're, well, they're going back now and they're. Uh, well, let's let's you know, well let's let's go off. Let's say we're taking the right. You have the bridge to the left. I mean, if that's where they're going, you have the bridge to the left. It's going to unless you widen the bridge, single lane. If you take a right, unless they ride, unless they widen that road, we have two single lanes heading east. Whoops, and then south is uh, East Avenue, which is John. It all single comes, lanes. It all comes down to we should have done this when we first built a road. Absolutely. And we didn't. Same with the Bayfront. And you know why we didn't? Because the McBride Viaduct was there and it would look like it was okay. Yeah. <laughs> somebody screwed well, up. You know, they want to cut, you know, shave money here, shave Well, somebody money screwed there. up, though. Well, they're they, always they should, they Tell me they didn't know the bridge was bad back then. Yeah. It needed some work. Yeah, they should have been maintaining it right along. Yeah, I said some I shouldn't have said. Somebody's accountable, see? Yeah, when you'd say that, they all shiver. You're in trouble. <laughs> all right. Thank you, sir. Well, the update on that building, okay? We were told, advised, that they actually pressed charges against a guy and that he was under, you know, some court uh, mm. JP to get it done. So. Oh, that's that's. But it, that, uh, nothing's happened since then. I'm not happy. Yeah. Go ahead, caller. Hey there, Chad. Doc. Hey, what's up? I can't get you on my cable access television. Um, I called cable access, but it's got to be Time Warner because he's got it on his screen, but he just, I don't get any visual or audio here on mine. Yeah. I don't know if you have others calling in about it or not. Wait, what, you're not getting the picture at all? No picture, no sound. So I'm going to have to call Time Warner and find out what's going on here. Do you uh, have... Anyway... Hang on, DJ's here. He's going to... Do you have a cable box? Okay, because... Uh, I don't know. I had to wait till the line was busy at free before I could reach it. Hey, Doc, do you have a ca uh, DJ's asking you, do you have a cable box? Yes, I do. And you can't get it on Channel 9? How's that? You can't get it on Channel... Uh, you want me to turn it up a little bit? Well, no. I, I okay. Have to, yeah. How's that? Well, district court at City, but I get the QLN and uh, I get Channel uh, 10. You can't get Channel 9, though. Uh, no 9 or no 8. No 9 or no 8. Don't you have to have digital cable yeah. now? Do you have one of the small boxes or the large boxes, the DVR? Ah, uh, you've got a good question on that because with my blindness, I can't tell what the box is. I know it's once in a while. I might try and plug it in after I get that's, done talking to you to see if I can get it back on. That's but, what I was going to recommend. Uh, sometimes like you unplug it. Right now. No, no, just a blank screen. Yeah, sometimes you unplug it and plug it back in, and within you know 45 seconds, it should come back if it's there. It'll reboot. Yeah. No, I'd like to get a hold of you. I know you've been gone for a couple of weeks your time mm -hmm. here. Uh, give me a call sometime, will you? I have a little bit of a request uh, from turning in to Grab Poland that I'd like to talk to you about. Okay, no problem. And uh, anyhow, it's good to see you back. I hopefully everything went well for you on your vacation. Yeah, it did. But, Thanks, and, Doc. Uh, yeah, so far, no different headaches in the city. The only thing I'm going to maybe make a suggestion if they want to help cut back on some of this uh, shooting. Uh, you, you know from the military experience, if you take a gun and you plug the barrel and they go to fire it, they'll blow the gun up. Maybe we ought to just plug the, these <laughs> guns that we find and give them back to the uh, kids and let them fire and blow their hand off. Actually, what they do, I think, uh, they try to get them back to an owner if they're... If they're well, you know, I'm speaking probably out of turn, but I think if, if it's involved in a crime, they stay here till there's a resolution. Then they may be returned to the owners if they can find them. And then if they're not, once the... Uh, I'd have to ask the police about this. They, this is, I know they keep things until there's a resolution and there's a, a decision made. Then it's possible that they do destroy them. Right. So they don't... You know, they if they go back to anybody, they go back to the person that... Uh, originally owned them right. but usually if they're involved in some kind of court proceeding until they there's absolutely no more uh, 
nothing you know the decision is final and there's a resolution then that's when the gun gets disposed of i do believe but i'll ask the chief about that because yeah, we have a property room in the you know, that, passion. and uh, the gun buyback i hear you know i agree with it may not be a workable program because like uh, joyce savacchio was saying when she had it they uh, found that they're people are buying old gold guns or yeah. guns that had no value or usefulness at all rather than actually the guns they were hoping to get back from you know, uh, people that shouldn't be having guns so that might not be a good idea for the, the city to get involved in i think they actually what what i heard from uh, a gentleman I met the other day that's with the federal government, uh, a lot of the guns that are used around here are coming from around here. You know, a lot of people think they're being imported, but so, you know, a lot of the times when houses get robbed and people are going to have to take, you know, if you got a gun at home and you're responsible, uh, I think the two issues that always come to mind are, uh, you know, trying to secure them properly, but then if somebody does take them, there's like a fear to tell the police. That, you know, hey, there's a gun out there and it's mine, you know. Yeah. And somebody robbed me, you know. So, yeah. you know, these kids aren't going up to, you know, Walmart and buying them when, they're, when they can't get them, you know. Yeah, they're, they're, they're more sensible than that, I gather. I understand some of these guns might even be coming from as far out as California, I mean, into our area. Actually, the ones in Erie, though, I heard are more, the majority of them are from around here, though. Are they? Okay. Yeah, there's enough here probably to get for them that... Squirt guns. Yeah, there you go. A squirt gun. Well, I don't know. Squirt guns, they still hit somebody with the cap gun. They just go bang. <laughs> Get a little smoke and bang. Well, now, now you got those Nerf guns. They actually fire at you. Yeah, right. Hey, thanks for calling, Doc. Yeah, call me when you can, okay? I got a, like I said, I got a question about polling for you. I will. All right. Mm, bye hey, Kaz, how about the study that says uh, Erie is one of the top ten cities with affordable housing and health care? Yeah. Uh, so if you're broke and sick. Move to Erie, you know. That, that's what they're telling you. Want me to do it? Yeah, go ahead. You're the, you're the key man. <laughs> I just point out. Don't, don't, don't goof up. We'll fire you. Go ahead. You're on the air. Yes, gun buyback. I thought it was a good idea until I got to thinking about it. They pay uh, $50 to these kids to bring a gun in. They'll just turn around, take that $50, and go buy two on the street with that $50. <laughs> there you go. Guns for Drugs, the Guns for Drugs program. Actually, actually, they they find out, and, and uh, the previous caller was right. They they find out that a lot of the guns that come in are really not even uh, well, I, I, the relics, like you know. Well, I know the uh, gam the gaming authority was you know really considering uh, flipping the bill on that, and now they're hearing you know just what she's saying. I mean, you don't they don't get the guns that we're targeting. You know, they get these oh. old broke down guns that probably don't even fire. And they're turning not. six shooters when they're keeping the, yeah, the nine mils, you know. Hey, listen, I got, I got a suggestion and a question for you, Cass. Well, I, I like suggestions because that's, you know, too many times we all got ideas, but nobody, everybody's against some, but nobody, you know, has any ideas. That's a good thing. Go ahead. Well, um, I'll go with my suggestion first. Okay. Um, you know, sometimes people just need a nut. They just need to be told, you know what, you really should pull the weed. You really should uh, rake your yard. You really should sweep your sidewalk. You know, sometimes they just got to be told or reminded. And, um, again, I think uh, if, if uh, City Hall or, or somebody from council could uh, champion this uh, as, as a project, mm -hmm. um, you know, do public service announcements. But here's my suggestion. You know, there's a lot, a lot of people out there that probably would like to spruce up the front of their houses, and they just don't have the means. They just don't have the tools. Mm -hmm. Then there are tons and tons of people in the city, like myself, who have way too many garden tools, and we would be more than happy to donate them. And maybe if there was a centralized place that people could drop off rakes and shovels and brooms and that, and then have these people that can't afford them, you know, just come and get them and borrow them or keep them. Or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, that would be a good idea. We, yeah. The problem is mostly the people that are renting their apartments and stuff. They don't take care of it. But you know, you can tell who the homeowners are and who the renters are. Yeah, that's Actually, a good idea. That is a good idea. You know, ma'am, somebody told me that, I can't remember who told me, they said they actually heard, well, somewhere, somewhere years ago, 
like uh, the mayor or somebody would come on TV, and this is many years ago, and would say something about, just a reminder that, uh, you know, uh, you need to keep your grass uh, at this height, you know, or something like that. And if you have a problem, please call us, you know, something like that. So, Like borrow a lawnmower? I, I like her idea. Because that is a good idea. You know, it's, you know, it's just an idea. If somebody could just organize it. And I think you might be surprised uh, that even if renters, uh, you know, don't own the property, they still would like the front of their house swept, maybe. Okay. And they just don't have the means or the need to buy tools. Okay, that's my suggestion. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it up with the, one, i tell you one good group that might be able to work with it. I'm not saying they have the place to store it, but I'll bring it up with the uh, neighborhood watch groups. Right, that's exactly what I was thinking, too. That would be a good start. Now, this kind of, my suggestion kind of leads me to my question to you. Okay. You, I had called a month or two ago, and you had suggested, somebody, yeah, I think it was you, and that it would be a really good idea to get a citizen's group together just to bounce ideas like what I just did off of and see where it might lead. Mm -hmm. Is that anything along those lines to get that started? No, but uh, I think, you know, usually the, I'm thinking, I thought about the other day about, you know, if the, if the administration is not going to do it, maybe we as a council can do it separately. Right. And I'll bring it up with uh, uh, Councilman Brennan, uh, the president, and see if, if he thinks that's a good idea where we each could nominate maybe a citizen at large or some or a couple mm -hmm. and just have them, you know, open up City Hall and have them, Come in and you know bounce ideas off us, you know. Yeah, or even if you had a suggestion box, you know, and just have somebody. But anyhow, okay, wait. I just thought of one more question. Go ahead. Is our code enforcement department understaffed? Uh, you could say it is, yes. Uh, but you could also say that they're not being utilized to their maximum, too. Having said that, I mean, yes, they. I think we got actually field reps, four or five, and. Uh, you know, but if they if they were out more proactively, uh, you know, it would it would still make a little better difference. But could they use more? Probably a couple more. But uh, if if you're going to give them a couple more people, you would expect results. And I think as we drive around town, you can see it. I mean, it doesn't look like our people are out there being proactive. I mean, they're waiting for complaints. But me, I, I could drive around from here just coming into City Hall, and I could cite about five or six people without even blinking. I don't think, and even when you do send a complaint or an email, they don't, it just seems like nothing is done. I'll tell you what, I live up here in Southeast Erie, and I pay more than three grand a year in taxes. Mm -hmm. No one in my side. But now I'm just starting to get people that are parking on the grass. Oh, yeah. I'll be damned if I'm going to pay three grand a year and have my neighborhood looked like East 26th Street did at one time with all those people parking on the front of there. And Coke better do something about that. Well, you know, we, our neighborhood watch was, uh, we, we would turn them in, and we were told one time that, uh, yeah, they could do it. Another time we were told you need a permit. Another time they're different. That, one hand don't know what the other hand's doing. And the way I heard it works is you have to, to park on your, on your sidewalk, I mean on your grass. You have to first approach a city. The engineer has to make a determination on whether what you want to do will cause a problem with groundwater, you know. And then, if they issue you a, a, a permit to do it, or I don't know if you need a permit, but you need their okay, then you must uh, put a, an approved material on the lawn, like stones or concrete. But I agree with you. I don't know why people have to park on their front lawn. It, I mean, it, it looks. I'll tell you one of the problems, you, you live probably where I do, right, ma'am, near East 38th? Uh-huh. You know, first of all, our people need to get out there, and if we have to strengthen the ordinance, I don't know what it is, whether it's in Harrisburg or Erie, but there's obviously more than three to five kids living in those apartments. You know, if you had three kids in there, you wouldn't need to have, you know, five and six cars parking around that house. I'm talking residential area. Forget down by Mercyhurst. Well, no, I'm talking about those are residential houses that people are now parked on top of. I, if if yeah, you if you I go along third, to come out and take a look at some of these. Yeah, you go along you go along East 38th, ma'am, and those are all residential houses that are being rented out, and there's too many people in there, so now they're parking on there. And then you have every everybody around the city now thinks it's cute to park their car on the front lawn. Oh, it's crazy. 
Uh, you know, be, be a little bit more proactive. Yeah, well, I don't think, you know, I really don't think we are, and I'm sure I'll get a phone call when I come off the air. <laughs> but I'll argue my point that uh, I, I don't, you know, could they use more men? Yeah, but if we give them more, they better be out there, you know. And we just can't afford to be proactive. I mean, everybody wants, you know, they You want. don't think we can be? No. Why? You, you're just adding more money to, you know, it would just cost more to hire more. No, I'm talking proactive. about the, the present thing. They're waiting around for complaints. Right. Okay. But it's tell just, me if you're driving around while, during your job, right? Yeah. Hey, do you tell me you can't see that there's a field of weeds in it? Well, I, you know, the problem is, I think, is getting hold of the landlords, isn't it? I mean, well, yeah, they got to do more than. Yeah, I mean, if there's I a mean, lot we, of legwork and then there's a warning, isn't I know, there a warning I know, or I something. I know part of the problem is they, they claim the DJs aren't being very cooperative. Yeah. Which is why there's a, a plan to make a separate court. Right. Just for those kind of problems. Because what this woman's saying is right. You know, if you keep running down a neighborhood, do you want to live next door to it? I mean, you want to live next door to it. Brings your property value down. The broken window theory. I mean, it's. It, I mean, that's a fact. But uh, you know, and, and when it comes to government, just with the police. I mean, I'm sh sure they'd want to take a proactive. But you'd have to hire so many more cops. Just you so know. I'm saying, if you start going out there, you know, the old theory was. How many cops? You are you still there, ma'am? Yeah, I agree with you. You just gotta work smarter. Yeah, I mean, think think about when we were kids. There was. I remember the rumor was we had 20 cops on motorcycles on 12th Street. Yeah. Right? Yeah. There never was more than one or two. Mm -hmm. But you know what? If they tagged a few people, all of a sudden the word spread that, hey, you know what? I, yeah, you, you can't get away with it no more. Right. We, when's the last time we really got tough on somebody with, with, with a lawn problem? Yeah, really. You are so right, Chad. I agree. All you have to do is a couple times put in the paper say, you know what? We're starting to prosecute. Like they did for the yeah. Uh, garbage bills? Yeah. Well, when we did the garbage bills, all of a sudden now, you know, everybody start calling, making payment plans. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to clean me, up the mess somewhere. It brings me to a related statement slash question. Why can't we find the properties that are breaking those rules and somehow add that onto an existing bill that they have to pay? Well, that's something we can probably do as a council now that, yeah. I mean, I, you know, we know who some of the bad landlords are. We yeah. know that. It's the same I'm, thing I'm with... I'm going to cut you loose, but one I can't remember if I asked you this before. Have you been told by the administration during this program not to call people uh, like uh, Bagnoni used to do? And no, no, I can call anybody I want. They may, may not answer me, but I'll call them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I got. Well, Ma'am, can you see? He's been told not. To, I, I have the phone book right here, so. Uh, he's been told. He hasn't been told not to call, but they've been told not to answer. There's a. Difference. They they do watch the show every once in a while. I call, but then a lot of times you call and you get the uh, the people, buzz around. They people notice. watch. I, I, from what I understand, people do watch the show upstairs, so you are being heard. <laughs> Sometimes when you call them, though, you know, you know, there's a few departments I know will answer back. Yeah. Streets has been very good. Uh, yeah. They're one of them. They sit up there. They go, oh, no. Hey, yeah. boing, oh, no, it's Kaz. Kaz is on the air. But, yeah, no, he's Kaz, never told yeah. me that. And, <laughs> but uh, I do. T sometimes I go right up here after the show and start talking to him. Right. All right. So long. Hey, Kaz, get, the, get that community uh, uh Whatever thing going. Yeah, I'm going to bring it up to uh, Community Garden Councilman Brennan yeah. and see if, uh, yeah, I like that idea. see if we can do one. You know, maybe it'd be nice if the administration would have one too. You know, that donate, it's like a joint donate one. Donate lawn mowers. People bring your driver's license, borrow the mower, take it home, bring it back. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Good idea, ma'am. All we need is a place to store it. That's all. Store it at your house. Yeah. Well, yeah. Store it at Cass's. Thanks, ma'am. Thanks. Thank you. Eerie days. This week, isn't it? It's this weekend. Yeah, they'll start setting up here, uh, probably, but they're doing it now, really. Yeah, they're, I tell you, they're, they're going at it over in Pittsburgh. Thursday's like, kind of like the setup day, and then it will start Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday. On a related note, Cat will be there. We are broadcasting live the main stage Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, starting at 3 or 4, let's see, 4.30, starting at 5 o'clock on Friday. We will be live I've broadcasting seen, you know, the main I've stage. Cool, I've seen Cool in the game. Yeah, within the last couple, they're pretty good. Good. Well, that's cool. Good to hear. They, you know, I'm waiting nice. for Jim Morrison. They're playing around. I'm waiting for Jim Morrison. You wait for you can be waiting a while. <laughs> go, <laughs> go ahead, call. I, I got a quick grass complaint too. This is kind of disturbing. It's the boys, boys and girls club on East Lake Road. Right. They are not cutting between the sidewalk and the street. There are weeds there that are four foot tall, cat. That's the one on East Lake Road, right? One minute. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, they're not taking care of it. Dude, keep on. Come on. The boys call. Yeah, be able to take care of that, don't you think? Hey, well, you know, one of the things we found out when we were talking about weeds, sometimes we were the uh, problem too, the community, you know, city government and county government and school districts. So I, yeah, I'll look into that for you. Well, I mean, they might not think that that's their problem. What well, is? I mean, well, that probably is because they have staff there. I know that that goes out. And well, I mean, even, even though you know everybody that's city right away, but they don't have you to have to take care of it. There, they could take care of that. Yeah, you have to take care of the city right away. That's still your pro, you know. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like in front of your house, that little strip. Right. The city right away means if they have to dig it up, they can do that. Right. Or, or they can take it in the future, but that's still your property. You know, you right. still you still have to maintain it. Correct. Hmm. What if I would like to plant a yeah, garden? Take a ride back by their cows. These weeds have been they've been growing there since April too. I think I think I will because I, it's about time I pay a visit to Ricardo's. Yeah, if you're going down to Ricardo's and have yeah. a nice steak, and there you, there you go. Check out them weeds. I will. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks. Hit the busy button there because we are done. Make busy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, caller. 922 East 38. The grass is 16 inches high. Wait a minute now, John. How do you know it's 16 inches high? <laughs> because it's up above my knees. <laughs> <laughs> The short Italian guy. 922 East 38th? Yeah. And who is that? Three. Huh? Whose property is that? I don't know. Probably somebody from McCain. Oh, by the way, I, <laughs> uh, you notice they tore down the old car wash, right? I'm going to tell you that. Huh? And yeah. We've got a trailer there, so maybe we're going to get that box store in after all. No, what I, you mean the one ordered by Pizza Hut? Yeah. What I was told was uh, another realty outfit bought that. And I think it's going to be like a Niagara car wash. I thought that uh, somebody they had had already had the car wash in there. Yeah. Uh, he bought the house on the corner down there. And he was going to put a general store in like Dollars or Dollar Store. Or yeah, there was many plans on that. Oh, but I heard that, that that property was sold to another another prominent agency. But now I think it has to go back to rezoning, doesn't it? No, I don't think so. I think it's... Uh, it, it was rezoned for a special thing, and if it's not gone to that thing, it has to go back well, for the, the rezoning board. The variances, you know, that'd be interesting, but I think variances apply to uses, and if, if the usage is within that realm, I'll check into it, though, okay, John? R.W. up, and he'll tell you. Okay. So, but... Uh, I see that in the restaurant up on Grand View is going to be reopened again. Southgate. It is? That's reopening soon in the big picture window. Okay. Thanks, John. Have a great day. And with that. Okay, you want to go ahead and make your comment. <laughs> I have no comment. We're done. <laughs> That's my comment. Thanks, everybody, for. Well, you just can't go off the air like that. I mean, oh, it, yeah. Please. You, know, you have to sign off. He's fit. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you for calling. Thanks, everybody. Do you have anything you want to come around? Yes, thanks for having me today. Uh, Are you going to come again? I don't know. We'll see. No, what do you mean you don't know? I'm, I know. I have fun with you. <laughs> I, you know, it's like I, come, I just come here to see you. Did you get answered what you wanted? Again? Absolutely. I, you know, it's always a good topic when we come here. It's fun. Yep. DJ's like my secret weapon, so, you know, I got, now I got, you know. One of these days I'm going to fill this clipboard with stuff to talk about, and I'm just not going to shut up. <laughs> that's a day I'm looking forward to. You know what? Soon. John, that's the first time I, I request a, what do you call it, a still plaque? Yeah. You know, we'll name, we'll name, uh, we'll name something after, after DJ. We'll name the microphone after him. Yeah, my own microphone. You get your own name tag right the here. The golden. The golden mic. Well, that's some guy already claimed that. Didn't it? Thanks for having us, Kaz. Hey, Kaz, anything? thank you. And, of course, thanks to the callers, and uh, yeah. yep. we'll be back next week, uh, God we willing. And We actually had some good suggestions today. Yes, we did. And you know what? I, I'm gonna, I, I got them all marked down here, and the time we start. I see that. You were looking good today, too, bro. <laughs> uh, don't, well, yeah, usually. <laughs> 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 Gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access Channel 9.